I on the truth part one. I on the truth part one. A brief summary from the origin of Christianity to its present day reality. Preface. This book is a brief summary from the origin of Christianity to its present day reality. Christians need to know that the original message preached by Jesus was the belief in one God and unifying him in worship. In this summary, I will refer to the Quranic verses which mention the story of Jesus Christ and his mother, as well as the biblical verses to highlight to the Christian readers the true message of Jesus Christ using their own sources. This book is for all open-minded people and the seekers of the truth, to let them know that what was sent by the Creator, Allah, to all nations, through all his messengers, throughout history, was one unique message which is pure monotheism. Allah, the Christians, Jews, and Muslims in the Middle East use the word Allah to refer to God. It means the only true God. The word Allah was mentioned in the earlier version of the Old Testament 89 times. Refer to Genesis 2 verse 4, Book of Daniel 6 verse 20, Hebrew and Arabic Bibles. Prophet Jesus was one of God's pious messengers who endeavored to guide their people to the truth, but many people followed their interpretations and went far from his prophetic teachings. I pray to God that this book will be beneficial to its readers and a source of guidance and blessing, in this life and in the hereafter. Introduction The belief in the oneness of God as a theological concept began at a very early stage in history. In fact, it preceded by many centuries, the belief in the Trinity, which was never mentioned in the teachings of the prophets of God i.e. Abraham, Moses, and even Jesus Christ himself. All prophets carried the same message to all nations. A simple straightforward message that is considered the condition of salvation, belief in one God, the Creator, and unifying Him in worship. Every prophet was the way for the people of his time to get salvation, by following his teachings. Worshipping like him, not worshipping the prophet himself or any other intermediary, idol, saint, priest, etc. It is the right of the Creator to be worshipped alone and the right of every human being to have a direct connection with his Creator. Prophet Abraham is the ancestor of Judah, the namesake of the Jews. The Jews firmly believe that there is only one God. Judah taught his people the religion of Prophet Abraham and the religion of all the prophets who came before him which is pure monotheism, believing in one God and unifying him in worship. This is the exact definition of Islam, the religion which started with Prophet Adam and continued with Prophet Muhammad the last prophet. The concept of the Trinity It's difficult to reconcile the original message of Jesus, the honored human prophet. Preaching in Jerusalem to the Trinitarian Christianity with Jesus as God and or Son of God adopted in the Council of Nicaea three centuries later. The Council of Nicaea, the first ecumenical debate held by the early Christian Church, concludes with the establishment of the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. Convened by Roman Emperor Constantine I in AD 325. According to Jesus. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. John 17 verse 3. According to Will Durant, the doctrine of the Trinity which was affirmed in the 4th century CE bears no resemblance to the original teachings of Christ concerning the nature of God. It is a complete deviation from his teachings. Will Durant When Christians conquered Rome, the new religion, i.e., Christianity, was infused with the blood of the old idolatrous religion. The title of Archbishop, worshipped for the Great Mother, and an innumerable number of lords who gave peace of mind and were like who exist in all places and cannot be detected with the senses. All of this came into Christianity as the blood of the mother comes into her child. The civilized empire handed over power and administration to the papacy and the impact of the word replaced the impact of the sword. The preachers of the church started to have positions of power. Christianity instead of putting an end to idolatry, it reinforced it. The Greek faith came back in the rituals and the doctrines of the church and the monastic saints. The Story of Civilization 11418, an American writer, historian, and philosopher. The doctrine of the Trinity, the idea of worshipping the mother and the child and the idea of the mystical union with God came from Egypt, and led to Platonism, agnosticism, and the erasing of Christian doctrine. Mithraism, which is a religion of Persian origin, prospered in Persia around six centuries before the birth of Christ, and it reached Rome around the year 70 CE, where it spread throughout the Roman lands. Then it reached Britain and spread to a number of British cities. Mithras was an intermediary between God and man, a similar doctrine in Christianity. 
was born in a cave or in a corner of the earth. His birthday was December 25th, which is the day celebrated by the Christians as the day when Jesus was born. He had 12 disciples. He died to save the world. He was buried but he came back to life. He was called Savior. Among his attributes is that he was like a peaceful lamb. The Divine Supper was held in his memory every year. One of his symbols was baptism. Sunday was sacred to him. What the biblical scholars say about the Trinity. Leon Jote. The origin of the concept of the Trinity was found in the Greek philosophy, specifically in the ideas of modern Platonism, which took the basis of the idea of Trinity as a view of the creator of the universe from Plato, then developed it to a great extent, so that the resemblance between this idea and Christianity became greater. So, in their view, the Creator, the one who is absolutely perfect, appointed two intermediaries between him and mankind, who emanated from him and were also part of him at the same time, meaning that they are contained in his essence. These two entities are reasoning and divine spirit. An introduction to Islamic philosophy. A French Orientalist. Then he said, the marriage of Jewish belief and Greek philosophy did not only produce philosophy, rather it produced a religion too, namely Christianity which imbibed many ideas from the Greeks. The Christian concept of divinity is taken from the same source as modern Platonism. Hence you see many similarities between the two, although they may vary in some details. They are both based on a belief in Trinity, in which the three persons are one. God confirms this in the Quran, and the Christians say, the Messiah is the Son of God. That is their statement from their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who disbelieved, before them, Quran 930. The Jews and the Christians associate partners with Allah, the Jews do so by claiming that Uzair is the son of Allah. And the Christians do so by claiming that the Messiah, Jesus, is the son of Allah. What they say with their own mouths is simply made up without any proof from Allah. By saying such things, they are similar to the idolaters before them, who said that the angels were the daughters of Allah. Allah is far above such things, may Allah destroy them. How can they turn away from the clear truth to falsehood? At Taba, 31. The last book sent by God. Muslims believe as well in all the earlier revelations of God, the scriptures of Abraham, the book of David, the Torah, the gospel, etc. Muslims believe that the original message in all the sacred books is pure monotheism, unifying God in worship. Unlike the divine scriptures that preceded, the Quran has not been kept in the hands of any particular group or clergyman of Muslims which could have led to its misinterpretation or alteration. On the contrary, the Quran has always been within the reach of all Muslims who recite it in their daily prayers and refer to it for all their concerns. John Draper Idolatry and polytheism entered Christianity through the influence of the hypocrites who occupy positions of influence and high positions in the Roman state by pretending to be Christians. But they never cared about religion and were not sincere at all. Similarly, Constantine had spent his life in darkness and evil, and he did not follow the commands of the church except for a short while at the end of his life. History of the Conflict Between Religion and Science, John William Draper, an English born American scientist. There is only one verse in the Bible that is taken as evidence for the concept of the Trinity. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. 1 John 5 verses 7 to 8 KJV. However, it is very well known that this verse is a later insertion of the church. All recent versions of the Bible and most others do not include this verse. This represents the most obvious instance of a theologically motivated corruption in the entire manuscript tradition of the New Testament. The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture Published in 1996 Page 116 An American New Testament Scholar This verse is a Latin modification that found its way into a Greek translation of the Bible despite being absent from the thousands of other biblical versions. This verse is so well known that it has been given a special title, comma Johannium. Comma means a short clause. Modern biblical translations come from two manuscripts. 
Codex Sinaiticus, which has more edits than any other manuscript in biblical history, 14,800 edits. Codex Vaticanus, which comes from the Vatican. Neither of these two manuscripts contain the comma Johannium, nor is it found in modern Bible translations with the exception of the NKJV where it was added in order to match the KJV. This might be because the King James New Testament was compiled from over 5,000 copies of copies of the original manuscripts which have long since perished. This added verse was found in only one of the 5,000 plus manuscripts. All major theologians do not acknowledge this verse. In the King James Version, we read, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. 1 John 5 verses 7 to 8. According to the Thomas Nelson and Sons Catholic Commentary, it is now generally held that this passage, called the Comma Johannium, is a gloss that crept into the text of the Old Latin and Vulgate at an early date, but found its way into the Greek text only in the 15th and 16th centuries. The Thomas Nelson and Sons Catholic Commentary 1953 The verse, 1 John 5 verses 7 to 8, in NIV and most other Bible translations reads, 7. For there are three that testify, 8. The Spirit, the water and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Desiderius Erasmus in Novum Instrumentum Omni, the first published New Testament in Greek. This Greek text is also referred to it as the Textus Receptus, did not include the infamous Comma Johannium of 1 John 5 verses 7-8 in the 1516 or 1519 editions. However, it made its way into his third edition in 1522 because of pressure from the Catholic Church. When his first edition was published in 1516, such a great furor arose over the absence of the comma that Erasmus, to defend himself, argued that he did not include the comma Trinitarian formula because he found no Greek manuscripts that included it. One such a manuscript was produced, the Codex 61, which was written by one Roy or Froey at Oxford in circa 1520, he reluctantly agreed to include it in his subsequent edition. Erasmus probably altered the text because of politico-theological economic concerns. He did not want his reputation to be ruined, or his Novum Instrumentum to go unsold. Thus, the comma passed into the Stephanus Greek New Testament in 1551, first New Testament in verses, which came to be called the Textus Receptus, and became the basis for the Geneva Bible New Testament in 1557 and the authorized King James Version in 1611. Benjamin Wilson This text concerning the heavenly witness is not contained in any Greek manuscript which was written earlier than the 15th century. It is not cited by any of the ecclesiastical writers, not by any of early Latin fathers even when the subjects upon which they treated would naturally have led them to appeal to its authority. It is therefore evidently spurious. The True Message of Jesus Christ Scripture Translator, Emphatic Diaglot This text concerning the heavenly witness is not contained in any Greek manuscript which was written earlier than the 15th century Greek manuscript. A conservative version, because those who testify are three. Analytical literal translation. Because three are the ones testifying. An understandable version the New Testament. For there are three who give their testimony about Jesus. American Standard Version. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is the truth. Bible Basic English. And the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is true. Contemporary English Version In fact, there are three who tell about it. The Complete Jewish Bible There are three witnesses. Common Edition, New Testament And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is the truth. Darby for they that bear witness are three. English Majority Text Version For there are three that bear witness. English Standard Version For there are three that testify. Good News Bible There are three witnesses. God's Word There are three witnesses. Holman Christian Standard Bible For there are three that testify. The Hebrew Names Version 
for there are three who testify. International Standard Version For there are three witnesses. Living Oracle's New Testament And it is the Spirit who testified, because the Spirit is the truth. The Message A Triple Testimony New American Standard Bible For there are three that testify. New Century Version So there are three witnesses that tell you us about Jesus. Net Bible For there are three that testify. New International Reader's Version There are three that give witness about Jesus. New International Version For there are three that testify. New Living Translation So we have these three witnesses, New Revised Standard Version Bible. There are three that testify. Revised Standard Version And the Spirit is the witness, because the Spirit is the truth. Revised Version And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is the truth. The Scriptures 1998 Because there are three who bear witness. 20th Century New Testament IT is a threefold testimony. Updated Bible Version For there are three who bear witness. World English Bible For there are three who testify. 11. Martin Luther kept out the passage in his German Bible, 1545. But in 1574 the printer Feyerbend added it to later editions of Luther's translation. The Expositor's Bible Commentary also dismisses the King James and New King James Version's editions as Obviously a late gloss with no merit. The New Testament Canon Glenn Barker, Volume 12, 1981, Page 353 Edward Gibbon All the manuscripts now exist, above fourscore in number, some of which are more than 1,200 years old, the orthodox copies of the Vatican, of the Complutensian editors of Robert Stevens are becoming invisible, and the two manuscripts of Dublin and Berlin are unworthy to form an exception. In the 11th and 12th centuries, the Bibles were corrected by Lon Frank, Archbishop of Canterbury, and by Nicholas, a cardinal and librarian of the Roman Church, Secunda Mortodoxum Fidum. Notwithstanding these corrections, the passage is still wanted in 25 Latin manuscripts, the oldest and fairest, two qualities seldom united, except in manuscripts. The three witnesses have been established in our Greek testaments by the prudence of Erasmus, the honest bigotry of the Complutensian editors. The typographical fraud, or error, of Robert Stevens in the placing of a crotchet and the deliberate falsehood, or strange misapprehension, of Theodore Beza. Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, 4, Gibbon, page 418. Gibbon's findings were supported by his contemporaries, such as the brilliant British scholar Richard Porson who also proceeded to publish conclusive proof that, 1 John 5. 7, was first added by the Church in 400 A.D. The most learned scholars of Christianity now unanimously recognize this verse to be a later interpolation of the Church has not prevented the preservation of this fabricated text in our modern Bibles. To this day, the Bible in the hands of the majority of Christians such as the KJV still unapologetically includes this verse as the inspired Word of God without so much as a footnote to inform the reader that All noteworthy scholars of Christianity unanimously recognize it as a later fabrication. It was only the horrors of the Great Inquisitions which held Sir Isaac Newton back from openly revealing these facts. According to Newton, this verse first appeared for in the third edition of Erasmus's 1466-1536 New Testament. The text in 1 John 5 verse 7 only exists in eight Greek manuscripts. These contain the verse in what appears to be a translation from a late recension of the Latin Vulgate. Four of the eight manuscripts contain the verse as a variant reading written in the margin to identify it as a later addition to the manuscript. The eight manuscripts are as follows. 61, Codex Montfortinus, dating from the early 16th century. 88, a variant reading in a 16th century hand, added to the 14th century Codex Regius of Naples. 2.21, a variant reading added to a 10th-century manuscript in the Bodleian Library at Oxford. 4.29, a variant reading added to a 16th-century manuscript at Wolfenbüttel. 6.29, a 14th- or 15th-century manuscript in the Vatican. 6.36, a variant reading added to a 16th-century manuscript at Naples. 
918, a 16th-century manuscript at the Escorial, Spain. 2318, an 18th-century manuscript, influenced by the Clementine Vulgate, at Bucharest, Romania. The passage is not quoted by any of the Greek fathers, it would most certainly was adopted in the Trinitarian controversies. Its first appearance in Greek is in a Greek version of the Latin Acts of the Lateran Council in 1215. Furthermore, the text does not exist in the manuscripts of all ancient versions, Syriac, Coptic, Armenian, Ethiopic, Arabic, Slavonic, with the exception of the Latin version. And it is not found in the Old Latin version in its early form, Tertullian Cyprian Augustine, or in the Vulgate. Issued by Jerome Codex Fuldensis. Copied AD 541-46, and Codex Amiadnus, copied before AD 716, revised by Alcuin, first hand of Codex Valicellianus 9th century. The earliest instance of the passage being quoted as a part of the actual text of the epistle is in a 4th century Latin treatise entitled Liber Apologeticus, Chapter 4. Attributed either to the Spanish heretic Priscillian, died about 385, or to his follower Bishop Instantius. J. N. Loughborough the word Trinity does not appear in anywhere in the scriptures. The principal text supposed to teach it is, 1 John 5-7, which is an interpolation. J. N. Loughborough, Review and Herald. November 5, 1861. In fact, the text is not a strong scriptural argument after all. The text does not appear in any ancient Greek manuscript earlier than about the 13th century AD. That is, Despite its inclusion in the 1611 original of the King James Version translation into English, it is highly unlikely that it was in the original version of 1 John as John wrote it. No modern Bible translation that I am aware of includes it in the text except the New King James Version. And even this version carries a footnote about the text's absence from Greek manuscripts until relatively recent times. Apparently, it is some scribe's note to himself about the Trinity, originally written in the margin of the manuscript he was copying and later incorporated into the text by another scribe who may have been uncertain about whether or not it was a correction that belonged in the text, in any case, he opted to include it there. Dennis Fortin The New Testament does not have any explicit statement on the Trinity apart from 1 John 5 verse 7, which has been rejected as a medieval addition to the text. God, the Trinity, and Adventism Professor of Historical Theology, Dennis Fortin when 32 biblical scholars backed by 50 collaborating Christian denominations worked together to compile the revised standard version of the Bible based upon the most ancient biblical manuscripts available to them today, there were some very extensive changes made. Among these was the unofficial rejection of the text of 1 John 5 verse 7 as the fabricated insertion which never belonged in the inspired Word of God. In any way this edition does not confirm the doctrine of the Trinity. The illegitimate edition as it is, presents the Father, Word, and Holy Spirit as witnesses. This says nothing about the personhood of all three since, verse, 7, originally shows inanimate water and blood serving as such. The word, Trinity, did not come into common use as a religious term until after the Council of Nicaea on May 20, 325 AD, several centuries after the last books of the New Testament were completed. And in fact it is not a biblical concept, which has been proven to originate from pagan sun worship. James White made numerous anti-Trinitarian statements and never changed his anti-Trinitarian stance even in the year of his death in 1881 when he said, the Father was greater than the Son and that He was first. James Springer White, August 4, 1821 to August 6, 1881, also known as Elder White, was a co-founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and husband of Ellen G. White.